Hey guys, welcome to my channel Life with Val. We are continuing our three part series into life in the UK, any questions about the UK, audits in the UK, and I'm joined with Montez. Hi. So, in this video, we're going to kind of just delve into, I guess, the more personal aspect of moving here, apart from just money, apart from work, just some of the other, I guess, considerations and feelings and thoughts that actually come up in this experience. So, okay. So, as usual, I'm going to ask you some questions <laughs> and then we're going to answer them together. Hopefully. Okay. okay. How did you get emotionally ready to move to the UK? <laughs> I probably cried. <laughs> I cried for like so long. Um, jokes before moving. Like, before moving. Like I was, I wasn't, not that I was anxious, but I did feel like I was leaving my family. Mm. I was leaving my partner. There were just a lot of emotions in that I was just leaving. Mm. So I felt like. So at that stage in my life, I had a car, my own apartment, I furnished everything. And I think six months mm -hmm. before that, I didn't plan on all of this. So now it was like, okay, I'm making this big move and I, I have to give up this life mm -hmm. that I built for myself. And that wasn't easy to come to terms with. I actually, like I told some people, I feel like I'm grieving this mm -hmm. life that I had. And it was tough, um, but I kind of just planned everything out. Um, and I also did a lot of research to get me excited about where I was going. Um, and I was always excited about coming here, mm. but I just knew that I had to deal with the feelings that I was feeling in that moment so that when I'm here, I don't feel that constant pull to mm. go back. But I feel like you're also like a planner, vision board type of person. Yes, eh? yes, yes. I'm a planner. Mm. I knew everything. Like I did the research about the apartments. I knew rent. I knew where to look, bank accounts, all these things. And luckily, um, our company had a platform that I guess helps you find uh, helps you find the answers mm. and then you continue and do more research about it and even as I was leaving South Africa I knew okay I actually want to say bye to my friends when am mm. I planning it this is when it's done everyone should attend I d <laughs> you didn't have a okay okay <laughs> I did that <laughs> um I planned that I planned or tried to plan almost everything to the T because that helps me navigate my emotions because mm. it can't, it's a big deal. It's a big step. Mm. And I wanted to make sure it could go as smoothly as possible without getting overwhelmed by the mm. magnitude of the decision I was making. Mm. Mm. What about you? I feel like I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. But okay. Compared to most people, I don't know if you pick this up, but I'm extremely trolled. Okay. And when I say this, as in like, I'm not lying. Mm. I knew almost nothing. When I moved over. <laughs> That's not going to work. I booked the Airbnb. I had my tickets. I knew the company I was going to work for the rest. I was like, I'll figure out while I'm here. Well, best way to, to learn is in the trenches. Okay. So okay. I, I did the things, you know, I obviously sold my car, which was one of the hardest things for me because I feel like that was the first time it kicked in that, oh my God, mm. I'm leaving. Mm. Um, because the whole time I was just like, woo new journey you know i'm gonna live my best life and so i was very excited i wasn't like emotional in that way mm. um didn't prepare the way i didn't have a vision i'm just like i'm gonna see because I, I had this thing always that like i don't like to plan too far ahead and set myself up for disappointment so i'm like i'm not gonna think about it i'm gonna move in and see what happens mm. that, that was that was how i see things maybe it's from trauma i don't know <laughs> it's not the topic of today's conversation <laughs> But everybody sees things differently 100%. and the way you experience emotion is fine mm. and everybody's going to experience it differently. Mm. When it did hit me was the day that I was leaving because I stayed with my brother and he had his daughter at the time. So I saw her like basically grow up because mm. we weren't that long together but like she was just over here. But essentially, I saw a crawl for the first time. Oh. I saw a walk for the first time. Or first words. We were, like, incredibly close. Mm. And that was the first time I actually broke down. And I was, like, about to leave my house. And I'm, like, what the did I do? Mm. You know? Like, how do I leave this crying child oh. behind? Mm. And then my friends picked me up for the airport. And I was, like, just drive. Because otherwise, I won't go. Oh. Um, and that was the hardest thing. Then when I got on the plane, I was okay again. Mm. Then... I got here, moved to London. I moved in the heart of COVID and UK lockdown. Mm. So I was under quarantine for the first two weeks. Mm. 
on top of that, I was like in Airbnb alone. Knew no one in this, almost knew no one in this country. Yeah. I knew of people, but it was still alone. And so in that first three weeks where all I had was this little room and four walls to look at, I questioned my decision hard. And I was like, what the hell did I do? Mm. Like, Mumtaz, what were you thinking? Why do you think this is a good idea? This is why you should start planning shit. <laughs> Um, but then eventually I just kept asking myself, okay, why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm. And that helped me get through it. But I felt like that for the first two months where I felt, in, for the first time in my life, incredibly, incredibly lonely. Mm. And that's what no one warns you about, I feel, is that yeah. when you get here, you're going to feel a sense of loneliness that yeah. you never felt. You're going to have friends around you, you're going to make friends. But it's not the same as seeing your people or just as simple as hugging your people. Whew. That is one of the toughest things. Like you're having a bad day. You can't go see your mommy and no. just like sit in the presence, eat the food and then feel better. You're facing that hard day by yourself. Yeah. And no one warns you how tough that is. Mm. And so one of the things that I wish I knew was at least someone telling me that's the things you go through when you get here. Plus now you're also alone. Now you're alone with your thoughts. No? So now everything from your life starts rushing in. And you're like, okay, one thing at a time. We only have the emotional capacity to deal with so much. Please. Yeah. Then it's also cold. And it's cloudy. Yo, and the sun and so you go, you, you go through the absolute most. And so in terms of getting emotionally ready, it's tough beforehand or it can be tough beforehand depending situation depending yeah. but you i don't think you can ever be fully emotionally ready for mm. anything like this you need to decide at this point in my life is this something i want to do yes or no and then take a leap of faith mm. you can't pick mm. yourself fully ever i think also at the end of the day mm. no one no two experiences are the same mm. and i also don't think that just because it's challenging that shouldn't deter mm. you from like taking on this experience um and unfortunately it is in the challenges that mm. we actually grow and you learn a lot about mm. yourself so yes we are saying it's difficult but mm. don't let that be like yep this is not for mm. me just know that it's there know that it will come know that you can try your best to prepare whichever way suits mm. you um but you're never going to be a hundred percent ready mm. and that has to be okay yeah mm. and i think when i moved over the hardest part for me was for different people, it's different things. For me, it was Ramadan. Because that's like a time where you're fasting with your family. You feel a sense of togetherness. You feel community. Mm. And now I was living alone in the house. I was the only Muslim in the house at the time. Mm. Which means I was fasting, waking up to eat 3 o'clock in the morning by myself. Fasting for 18 hours. Breaking fast by myself. Which is something I've never had to do. And that was incredibly yeah. lonely. I made a TikTok not, few, not a few months after that saying, you know, you're living your dream. But no one tells you that. It can be that lonely. Yeah. And someone reached out to me, seeing that TikTok, and was like, next Ramadan, we're hosting like, events for girls that are alone in London, come through. And I was like, okay, it's so probably one of those things. I can ask the African people like, you must come for coffee. But yeah. then they never tell you where they live. And yeah. stuff. <laughs> so I thought it was going to be like that. But then Ramadan came and was already reached out again. And I met some of the most amazing people, some of the most like heartwarming people that like I honestly feel gave me a sense of community mm. in this country. So I also feel that you must be open and prepared when you're moving over to not be closed to yeah. new people, new experiences, new environments. So when you're very emotionally, it also means that, like you said, someone told you, you must grieve the life you have. And I think it's exactly that. You're no longer going to live that life. Even if you go visit South Africa, it's never going to be the same. Mm. You're also going to become a different person. So you must grieve that entire process in order to help yourself open up to what's, mm. to, come, mm. to, what's to come. And I definitely think mm. being here, it is about being open. Mm. And it's even open to meeting people, trying to make friends, being mm. rejected, that being okay. It's just, mm. it's, wow. <laughs> now, like, well, and I started talking about teams. Literally, yeah. teams, and I just bother her every day. And look at us now. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> but I'm, I, I yeah. do want to say, though, it does get better. Mm. Like, you will meet people, mm. you will find your community, you will find the people that are there for you. Mm. And unfo unfortunately, or fortunately, everything does happen for a reason. So mm. just trust the process, go through the process, be open, 
be willing to learn mm. and unlearn and i think you'll be fine mm. i also think you need to establish what you consider a home for yourself and mm. how you want to because you're establishing your home in yeah. london or wherever you are in the uk is what's important mm. like i was that person when i move over now i'm gonna live by myself have my because i don't want to live with anybody else that was my thought process i was like mm, just gonna be you know you see those movies where you go love love laugh alone in their apartments you know bridget jones vibes and then and then i moved in i was alone in quarantine for the three weeks and it was lonely mm. and then i was like you know what actually looking at the rent maybe maybe i can't live alone yeah. i'm gonna try and share and that's how i shared with that person seven months mm. Moved into an apartment with two girls I met on the internet, basically. Met them for the first time the day I moved in. I spoke to them once before that on a call. And that could have gone either way. Yeah. But moving in with those girls was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me when I moved over. Mm. Because they themselves were not from the UK. So they made sure I was comfortable. We became really, we still friends to this day. I feel like they became two of my closest friends very easily. They became more like sisters to me, I would say, because okay. the people you live with become your family. Mm. And so if you are going to share, it's also important to establish who you are as a person and what you want out of that living situation. Mm. Because I feel like when I'm living with somebody, I do want to be closer, but I don't want it to be a stranger that, okay, we both come, we sleep, we basically don't talk to each other. Mm. Because that, I feel like, can be more lonely mm. sometimes than living alone. So I do feel like it's it's very important. So we're still friends today. It was one of the best decisions I, I ever made, I would say. But they also helped me realize that that's the type of home I want in the UK. Mm. And so... I feel like it's important. I didn't... No one told me that that was something I had to formulate in my mind before. Mm. It was just... I thought it's going to be based on preference. But who are you at home and what do you like having at home? Mm. Like, do you like having presents at home? Do you like... It's just having someone there. You don't have to talk to them. You're okay with that. In which case, living with someone that's going to talk to you is fine. Mm. It's what you want and what how you are as a person, I would say. Mm. I think that's an interesting mm. point. So, with my, with my experience, so... I actually live alone mm. and I do think that that probably made it harder because I do think even if there was just someone in the house, it mm. would have helped so much more because there were a lot of times where, you know, there were the difficulties mm. with work and now you're alone and it's just mm. like, <laughs> what, do I, what do I complain to now? Like, it was just, mm. it, it honestly felt like hell. Mm. And like we've said in this video, previous one, no one tells you how lonely it is. Mm. And if you know, like, beforehand that no you actually do like it when there's mm. people around just for the sake of having mm. people or something if loneliness isn't something you struggle with then sure go live alone mm. but sometimes just having mm. another human there helps and i do think it's even better when mm. it is your friends because then obviously they do turn yeah. into family and i'm not saying that you know i'm still lonely mm. like i have made friends mm. and like it's nice it's nice now that i've made friends and i do feel like they've helped me get through mm. things um, so it got better, but to make it easy in the beginning, mm. I think that probably would have been, if I had to remake a decision, it would be probably be that one mm. just to change the experience. But, yeah. And it, yeah. it does make a big difference. I feel, um, mm. because I also had the other end of the spectrum where I didn't live to somebody else and that didn't work out as great. And I just felt more lonely living there. Then I got another new flatmate and that girl makes me laugh every single day. Like mm. I laugh out loud. That's my tummy hurts. Mm. Like that's how well we live together I feel and that's like we have great time. So it feels like I'm living with a sister. Like during the day if I'm working at home I go pop into my head into it multiple <laughs> times to be like just tell her random sentences but it doesn't feel like I'm bothering her. And mm, I feel like that's, nice. that's the relationship you need to have with the people you are living with, if that's something you are looking for. Mm. But I also wouldn't base it on the personality or what you think you like in Cape Town. Because in Cape Town, I like my independence. I like being alone. I like doing everything by yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. But that was because I knew I had people at home should I need it. Yeah. And then I came here and I didn't have it. So now I want attention. <laughs> It's as simple as that. I'm not even going to lie. I feel like I want attention sometimes. It's all that it is because it's lonely. It's a little lonely. I think mm. I'm actually the same. And like, people mm. were telling me, oh, my Instagram stories decrease significantly. I was like, yeah, because now I have to talk to it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to talk to myself on screen. Mm, mm. 
and so it really does make a difference mm. and you can you can feel it in like your personality and how you change and how you interact with people yeah yeah mm. these are all very true points mm. i know i came here thinking i'm an independent woman mm. living alone has also reinforced that i'm independent i got this I am on the phone every night asking for attention, <laughs> calling everyone. Like, I want to be in people's mm. faces because this loneliness and independence, mm. no, it's just not my bad. Like, who's the only independent woman I want no more? <laughs> it was a lie. It's a scam. That was another scam. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, okay, then, do you feel like you had a massive culture shock when you moved to the UK? Um, I wouldn't say so much of a culture mm. shock per se. Um, I think... The main thing was just mm. the friendliness of people. Mm. So I just found that... You mean the unfriendliness? <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so like, for example, when I would... So when new people came to the office back home, you know, everyone can see they knew, hi, are you okay? Mm. Do you need help with anything? Here in the first few weeks, like no one reached they out. They just sit there and they watch struggles. Yeah, it, literally. <laughs> Literally, here yeah, when someone bumps into you mm. on the street, they don't even look back to say sorry. You find yourself saying no, sorry. Mm. Um, you know, I just feel like here, yeah, people aren't as friendly and open, mm. and I think that's also what makes it hard to make friends mm. with people Local from British here. People. Like mm. that's not. I don't think I actually have a Brit friend yet. No, I don't. All the people that I have that are Brit friends or. I got from that Ramadan thing. See? Other brown British, I mean brown British Muslims. You see? Mm. I don't have, well, I haven't been the involved other people in also like that. African. I don't know what it is, mm. but as South Africans, we stick together, we're mm. friendly. I think it's also just an African thing generally. Mm. So I th- I'd say that's probably the biggest culture shock mm. for me. Like, I'm not chatty with strangers in South Africa, but I'm still friendly. Mm. Yeah. It's so strange that you and the person opposite you in a train, you basically face to face, but you will never make eye contact. Don't do that. You look you look everywhere else besides that person's face. And if you do it, that's awkward. You know? <laughs> it's no. Bad. And I found that here people are not friendly unless there's something to initiate a conversation. Yeah. You don't randomly greet people. No. Like it's not okay. Don't do that. Don't do um, that. And and that's what I also found tough. Like when I came there, I was like, "How do I speak to people?" Mm. Like I felt like when I just randomly spoke to somebody, even like a shop assistant, they look at me like I was crazy. Yeah. Like, what is going on? Even saying like, "Why hi, are you so happy?" happy? <laughs> like it's just just weird here, mm. man. Like so, I mean, when if you do end up like going to like a cashier or a teller, "Hi, how are you? Why are you asking?" Mm. Like they, not, one mm. time I said, "Have a nice day," and and like. Sometimes I still get the shocked look from them when I tell them I have a nice day yeah. after I'm done being served. Like, it's, but I also feel like it's, sometimes it's a London thing because apparently it people outside of London are friendly. Like I yeah. stayed in Scotland when I did this appointment for three months, and the people in Scotland, some of the friendliest people I've ever met, so lovely. Mm. Then I came here and I was like, okay. Yeah, no. A little bit rude, but <laughs> but it's not. It's just the culture. It's the and culture. It's, it's not to, personal. Yeah. Mm, it's not, it's personal. not about you. Mm-hmm. And for me, I find it hard because I'm not someone that makes a conversation. Mm. You say hi, I'll say hi to you, but I'm not going to ask mm. you. Cause I won't engage. So it was just like, hey, I'm shy. Mm. You guys want to talk to me? Okay, I'll eat lunch alone. It's fine. Mm. So ugh, I found that to be probably the toughest thing. Mm. Did you have any specific culture shock? No, just I feel like just the unfriendliness or like how hard it is to approach British people more than anything. Yeah. But in terms of diversity, I feel like the majority of this population not British anyway. Mm-hmm. So you sometimes you walk in certain areas and you're like, Am I in the UK? Like Yeah. <laughs> like honestly what, you forget. What, what country is this? Yeah, you forget. You forget because there's so many like people who immigrated and so many expats living here that it's so diverse that you don't feel like you stand out like a sore thumb. Like, yeah. If anything, like the Bengali people here think that I'm part of them because we have a similar skin okay. color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it happened to me more than once. We all go to a shop or I get in an Uber and they start speaking their language and I'm like, huh? <laughs> 
And then they'll be like, are you not? And I'll be like, no, I'm not. And they'll be like, where are you from? And I'm South Africa. They're like, don't lie. <laughs> so, like, that's what I mean. Like, you won't stand out as a person moving over here because yeah. there's going to be so many people that look like you, basically. Yeah. I don't think... And I think... Mm. I mean, in South Africa, you are very conscious of your race and mm. who you are as a person. And here, it's just like, you're just a person. Mm. You aren't... Like, for example, me, I'd be assumed to be colored. No, I'm mixed race. Yeah, it's just like, I'm a person. Mm. Here to do my job. Do whatever I need to do, and that's fine. I will say sometimes there are those issues in the UK. I'm not going to act like that doesn't okay. exist. There are biases. There are, 100%. you know, a whole lot of things. But at the same time, some British people, they are so polite that they'll just keep it inwards. Mm. They won't act out in it. Mm. And there are times where they will be against you not because of the colour skin, purely because you're not British. It's not because yeah. you are brown yeah. or because you are anything else. It's just that we want to grow our own people sometimes. Brits. Yeah, Brits for Brits. So, like, they, it could be a brown Brit person, for example. So, it's really not the kind of skin. It's just that you're not Brits, you're from the outside, and now you're coming in, basically. Yeah. Um, But, like, other than that, I don't think mm. significantly, no. I wouldn't so. say I've experienced anything worse than I did. Because, mm. like, that was obviously a big thing. People were like, you know, you are Muslim going to live in the mm. UK. There's yeah, a lot exactly. of da 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 but I felt like there are so many Muslim people here that they are more open to it. Like, I even felt like people were more educated about Muslims here sometimes Definitely. than they are in South Africa. Mm. Like, even catering for us from, from like, um, an eating perspective. Exactly. Um, obviously, you are going to face anywhere in the world those one or two people that maybe won't now want to sit next to you on a train or something like that. But I haven't myself experienced anything significant past that. Mm. So... Culturally, I feel like it's fine. You can easily fit in. Yeah. It's a very diverse, open-minded country, I would say. A really open-minded. Yeah. Like, literally, you can walk around and anything, no one's going to care. Nope. <laughs> do you, boo? Um, then, what do you feel like is the best part about living in London? I actually want to mm. say that no day is actually the same or no weekend is mm. the same. Like, there's always something to do, always a new experience, something mm. you've never tried. Like, there's so many different restaurants, mm. so many places to do, different activities. So the only many... thing is it's expensive now. Yes, <laughs> yes. So everything's expensive. Like so I'm... unless you're not omitting it down because you're broke, there's yes. a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Trust me, there's a lot to do if you're not broke, which is why salary is important. Um, but I just really mm. like the amount of opportunities and experiences that mm. I've been exposed to, and mm. there's still so many things i haven't even like i haven't even scraped the surface of what i could be doing here because mm. there's just that much variety mm. which i appreciate um i think that just comes from there being so many different people different interests mm. like there's so many concerts all the time i haven't even been to a concert mm. you know theater shows Musicals. there's mm. it just feels endless mm. And I like that feeling. Mm. Mm. Like, I feel like, you know, all those videos that always pop up that's like, oh, things to do in a city. Yeah. There's so many of those in London. I just like all of them. I'm like, I'm going to come back to them. There's ones I liked from when I moved here that I haven't got. I haven't, like, scratched my list. Like, barely scratched my list of things that I want to do and experience. Mm. But the things you get here, he's very unique. I would say there's a lot of his immersive experience vibes Mm. that goes on. Mm. Um... And you can literally tailor your weekend to your mood. Yeah. I feel. Mm, that is true. Mm. The only thing is, is that, that, that I don't like about London, eh? Is that you must plan some nights. You need to well, plan. And mum does not a plan, you know? <laughs> so it's a little tough sometimes. Make reservations So now, nah, well. But the thing is, you must be smart. You must be friends with people who like to plan. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that is so true. Because unfortunately, you can't like mm. wake up and say, "Okay, tomorrow I'm going to, for example, Winter Wonderland." Mm. No, it's probably fully booked. Mm. What are you gonna do? You know. So that's the one thing. Like you can't get up and go. Big events, you have to big plan ones. In exactly. In advance, yeah. But like events. What am I American? Ooh, what's going on with the accent? <laughs> um, but like for example, you can choose to go to markets all the time. Like. There's markets almost every day, mm. every weekend, Christmas markets. There's always there's something to do. Like, if you just look at things to do in London this weekend, mm. you'll find something. It can also just be out of London. Mm. So, going to neighboring towns as well, Cambridge, mm, Oxford. Mm. I mean, then you can also actually just travel the world. Mm. 
And even like the variety of these markets, so like some of the markets I've been to multiple times because there's so much food there. And yo, I love to eat, guys, I'm not gonna lie. But now I'm so want to try everything with that and greedy like that. So now I have to go a few times to the same markets I can because now I'm gonna think about it until I try it. Because I didn't try it. Uh, so now I have to go back. So you can literally go back to the same place and have a different experience as well. This is true. Mm. And my thing is though, and I, I guess this is the one thing I don't like like you'll try something it looks good mm. and then it just doesn't taste as good mm. so it's like you know it's yeah they about the aesthetics yeah as yeah. Long as something looks nice they're happy they don't always give out the taste the but taste. also because i think they don't know what good tastes like and we're very spoiled in south africa with food. flavors mm. and just that oof. every i feel like in south africa you know mm. you'll always probably always get a good mm. burger for example but yeah <laughs> mm. I think though the hardest apart from the good the hardest thing for me was realizing travel times in London like in if like I lived in Cape Town so for me a 15-20 minute journey that was the maximum amount you drive around to go somewhere yeah now someone tells me oh it's like an hour away and I'd be like oh only an hour okay let's yeah. go yeah I'd be walking because it's only 40 minutes away 40 minute walk or I'll take a train because it's only an hour away so your concept of time also changes significantly and 100%. it has to yeah, because we don't drive here yeah. we mm. take the tube like everybody else your boss at work is also on the tube yeah. with you. that's just the culture yeah. most people take the train mm. but it takes a long time to get from A to B a lot of the time I feel and like be prepared to travel I feel mm. like any, if you're going anywhere in London just it's probably going to take an hour mm. and that's fine that's considered good time mm. in London it sounds bad now but when you get here you get used to it you get used to it and the only thing is when you have shopping though and you're like you and I'm not smart to have to go Ooh. on the train for like an hour with Ooh. the shopping and that's walk. difficult and uh. walk um, one thing you do get used to is walking. Mm. 30 minutes feels like a good walk. Mm. And you're like, I'll oh, get my steps in. Mm. But back home, oh no, I would not be seen walking. <laughs> <laughs> I will go to the corner shop, I drive. Drive <laughs> everywhere. So, I mean, it's good mm. in that you start walking. Um, but also you feel safe to walk here. That's what I feel. Yeah, the same I feel like I can walk late at night by myself and not feel panicky. I've actually never been concerned mm. about my safety. Mm. At any hour, anything I've been doing, I've never been. That's concerned. one of my favorite things about living here. Same, actually. same. I think mm. that would definitely be one of a good, one of the best mm. parts about being here. It's just how safe you are. You don't need to be hiding your belongings in places. Mm. You don't need to worry if someone bumps you, like bumps your bag, mm. something is gone. No, it will probably still mm. be there. Like it's so safe that they just put deliveries right outside your door, mm. and you will find it. Yeah. Like they'll leave it there during the day and then you come at night and you're like, okay. Okay, it's there. Cool. You don't need to be worried. But mm. the South African in me is like, I must be home. <laughs> <laughs> or when someone's walking too close to you, like, yeah, you don't rob me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but overall, like, I feel like it's nice living here. I enjoy it. I, mm. um, bro, both statements. Like, we complain, we complain we and complain. be like, oh, shit's expensive, I'm corrupted. But at the end of the day, I still feel like my quality of life, life is here better, yeah. has improved significantly. When I say I am broke, it means that I managed to also save for that month and I refuse to touch those savings. Mm. So it's not that I'm living penny to penny, paycheck to paycheck. Mm. It's that I've done everything I needed to do. Now I just want to live my best life, but to live my best life is a little limited. Mm. And so it's more of a how much I get to live my best life. But in a month, I can go traveling on a weekend or for a few days. I can pay my rent. I can pay all my bills. I can pay for my groceries. I can still go eat out a bit. I still take the trains to work. I still travel everywhere. And then it's at the end of the month, then it's going to be a little... And I also saved. And then it's still going to be a little tight. Mm. But not tight as in like, oh my God, I'm not going to make it. Mm. Tight as in like, let's just be smart about this. Yeah. Don't buy it, take out, cook. And that and, saves you and so and much saves money. you a lot of money. You know, when you cook that one pot of food and you're like, right, so <laughs> this one's not go the whole week. <laughs> That's been me this week. <laughs> or, you know, like you just go back. Go back to your childhood days, eat your peanut butter and bread, mm. you know? Like, I was poor before and I didn't die. Mm. So, that was my thing, is that, like, now, if at the end of the month, I'm a little, I'm a little, touch, I'm like, you know, I survived all those years, but I didn't die. Exactly. It's going to be okay. It's and so, it's okay. reminding yourself that just because you family doesn't mean you have to be, like, this high and mighty person. Mm. Like, don't forget who you are and where you come from, and I feel like you'll be fine. Mm. No, that's very true. Mm. Mm. Then, last question. Would you do it again? Hmm. <laughs> Would I do it? Can I just ask it back to you? 
I feel like I would do it again. Exactly the same way, maybe not. Maybe I've yeah, changed okay. a few things. Um, my my no tweaks. Mm. But I can say that with hindsight, chances are I'd have made the exact same <laughs> exact same decision because I also feel that I wouldn't be where I am today and have a thought process after today if I didn't go through the things I went through. That's true. And made the decisions I made. I feel like everything in life happens, happens for, for a reason. Is. And I knew with absolute certainty that this was the right decision for me. I didn't know why, but I also believed in a higher purpose and a higher plan. Mm. And I felt like that was the path for me. And so even when times are tough, I'm here for a reason. Yeah. And I need to sometimes just stick it out. Like anything in life, sometimes you, you just, just need to stick, stick it out. out. No, that's so yes, I would do it again. Sometimes I wish I made a little bit of a different decision. Like maybe I shouldn't have went on that one trip because I spent too much money. I could have yeah, saved yeah. it for something else. Or maybe like, or something big, like whatever I gone to other firm. But I feel like that doesn't matter to me. It got me where I am now. Mm. And so 100%, if I had to do, do it all over again, making the exact same decisions, I would do it again. Because then I now appreciate what That I is have. true. That is true. Mm. To be honest, I think even given how difficult this year has been, mm. I honestly actually think I would do it again. 100%. Mm. Because I guess, I don't know if it's a way of thinking, but mm. like I'm just, I'm just different. And I just mm. like, I like the person that I am mm. now. And that was never going to happen back home. Mm. Um, one of the reasons... I also kind of needed the move like something so drastic was because I felt like I was getting complacent. Mm. Like I knew Like now this was it is this gonna be my life for the you know my days for the rest of my life. And I just knew that was mm. not for me. And now I just look back and the experiences like mm. just everything, I would do it mm. again. And you know, difficulties come yeah. because you need to grow. Mm. And I'm not gonna say they shouldn't have happened. Mm. Um I've learned a lot, I've grown a lot. And I do think that it's just going to propel me to what's mm. coming next. Mm. So in, in I hindsight, feel like I'm a completely different, not completely different, but vastly different to who I was when I moved over. Mm. But if anything, I can honestly say that I feel like I'm proud of myself mm. for everything that I went through and for how I dealt with it. Yeah. And the person that I came out as yeah. more than anything else. Mm. I mean, Which is, is a big statement to it make. It is a very it's, big statement. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to admit to yourself. Am I proud? But I feel like yeah, I can say yes, I am. Because it was a lot. And I yeah. feel like it takes a lot of courage to come over here. Face whatever you need to face. Yeah. Face all of your issues. Face everything you thought about your yourself. Traumas. And question your own self to be like, are you who you think you are? Basically. And it's tough. And, and so, that answer is mm, be okay with it. it. Yeah, so basically like you're arguing with yourself, almost like a mental vision. <laughs> but uh, I feel like it's necessary because... Mm. No one here fully knows you. You're not around your family. Yeah. You're not around any influence. So you're allowed to be as honest with yourself mm. as you could possibly be. Mm, in a completely new space where there's no memories, no issues, nothing. You get to see who you actually are mm. and and then decide who you, you want, want to be. be. Exactly, exactly. Mm. That's what I like. Honestly, this experience has been a whirlwind mm -hmm. but I, it's honestly it's been a positive one it's yeah. definitely for the best it's not something i, I regret mm -hmm. it's not something i i wouldn't change mm -hmm. like i'm i'm grateful mm -hmm. and i'm excited to see what comes next yeah. and what like like you said you grew your channel so yes, much she look grew at your this. channel she grew her instagram <laughs> like if you look at her you know, on a traveling pictures you see the glow you see she is happy she's doing things she loves so mm -hmm. yeah she audits but then also that now pays for the lifestyle that listen you, you know what I like mean? it literally so supports you must that. Be also be made the sacrifice in life sometimes mm, mm. exactly and whatever you like if this is a stepping mm. stone for you if this is just to i don't know see the world mm. let it be that and enjoy it for what it is mm. and then you move forward um i do hope that this has been very mm. insightful i've enjoyed creating this i've enjoyed mm, our conversation also. i am keen to do more of these um please do leave any questions um i'll put both of our instagram handles if you do want to reach out to either of us Follow and like. <laughs> <laughs> um and lastly thank you guys for watching like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye, bye. why am i piecing out like a <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs>